The first project is a terracotta lighthouse. I'm using four different sizes of terracotta pots, two saucers from Dollar Tree, some nautical rope and some fish netting and a solar light, some tumbling tower blocks. I'm also using some shells and some acrylic paint from Michaels. The first thing I'm going to do is give my four pots a coat or two of this acrylic white paint. Next, we're using the black acrylic paint for our two saucers. I'm curious if any of you guys use the um, acrylic paints from Michaels, what you think of them. Um, you know me, I usually am using the Waverly chalk paint, but I thought I would give these a try. Let me know in the comments what paint you use and why you like it. I'm also going to give eight of these tumbling tower blocks a coat of the black paint as well. I'm painting eight of them. I will, however, end up only using six of them in my project. So this is how crafting goes for me. I decided that I wanted my big saucer, which is going to be the base of my lighthouse, to be blue instead of black. So no big deal. I'm just taking some dark blue acrylic paint from Michaels and just painting over the black. I think it did take two coats. I do notice that acrylic paints are a little bit more watery than chalk paints, which is why I think a lot of us um, crafters like to use the chalk paint. It's faster because it covers quicker, but I'm finding that um, I don't have the variety of colors I would like with the chalk paint, so decided to use acrylic. And I know you can add plaster of Paris to acrylic paint to make it into chalk paint. I may consider doing that sometime in the near future. Now that my white pots are dry, I am taking some painter's tape and going around each of my pots so that I can paint the rims of the pots a different color. I didn't want my lighthouse just to be completely white. And I love this painter's tape. I think I just get it at Walmart um, because it sticks well enough for painting, but then um, comes off really easily. I decided to use this color. It's kind of a bluish, greenish, gray. I will try to make sure I put the name in the description box. I believe it's from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. It's one that I've had for a while. But I'm just gonna go around and on all four of my pots, I'm going to paint the rim this color. I will say that this is probably the hardest part of the project. Um, once all the rims were dry and the painter's tape was removed, I'm using some of my Fix All Adhesive from Dollar Tree to attach all my pots together. Now, the terracotta pots, they don't line up perfectly, so that's why I say it's a little difficult. And um, excuse the fact that I'm putting glue on the rim because it actually needs to go inside the pot, there we go, in order to stick to the pot it's going on top of. So I tried really hard to get these um, glued as straight as possible but was not always completely successful. However, I think it still looks absolutely fine in the finished product. So here's all four of my pots, and then I'm going to glue my smaller saucer on top of the top pot there and get it as centered as I possibly can. I will mention that with the Fix All Adhesive, you do need to let it sit for a while to make sure it's completely adhered. 
I'm also going to glue two of my tumbling tower blocks laying down in the center and then four of the blocks standing up like you see me doing here. This is just to make the top little area of my lighthouse. And the finishing touch for the top is um, one of these solar lights from Dollar Tree. I'm just taking the stake part off and putting some Fix-All adhesive on the bottom and gluing it to the center of those blocks. To decorate the bottom of my lighthouse, I'm just taking hot glue and a variety of small pebbles that I have, and then also some seashells, and just layering them on um, however I wanted. This is completely optional, of course. If you just want to leave the base of your lighthouse plain, you don't have to add anything to the bottom. To finish off the top of my lighthouse, I took four small pieces of nautical rope and hot glued them between the standing tumbling tower blocks just to kind of make it look like that top roped off area at the top of the lighthouse. And then I'm also going to take a pebble just to fill in the space between the ropes. Next, taking a pencil, I'm just lightly drawing out where the door and the windows will be on my lighthouse. And once I have them how I like them, I'm going to fill them in with my painter's paint pens from Walmart. And here's what the lighthouse looks like with the black doors and windows. And then you'll see I took some white and added to the details there. The last thing I'm going to do on my lighthouse is I'm going to go around each of the pots where the rim blue and the rest of the white meet up just to add some nautical rope to give it one last touch. And here's one final close-up look at our lighthouse sitting in the corner of my bathroom counter. And I just absolutely love how it turned out. When that light has enough juice given to it, it will even glow in the dark. For my next project, I'm using a rectangular frame that I already had. I'm using 22 of the one gallon paint stir sticks and white rope from Dollar Tree along with some chalk paint. So here I'm just fitting in my paint stir sticks to see how many it will take to fill in the back of my frame. The inside of the frame just happened to be 12 inches, so these paint sticks fit perfectly. I decided to do 22 paint sticks and I'm doing these different colors, the antique wax, pool blue, elephant, mineral, and white. So once I had all of those painted, I'm just going to start gluing them in using my hot glue. 
And um, the little notches, I'm just going every other. So that one, the notches are down. The next one, the notches are up. And I'm just going to fill that in. That one was a little long for that spot for some reason. So I'm switching it out with a different one and going all the way across. Now, 22 was going to be a little too long. So instead of having to um, cut any of these, there are two places I believe where I put the stick kind of behind, but you really can't even tell. There's what it looks like with all of the sticks. And then taking some of this thicker white nautical rope from Dollar Tree, I spelled out the word beach in cursive. And then here I'm just hot gluing it down in places so that it will stay in place. And here's what it looked like when the words were all glued on. And here it is hanging on the wall in our beach bathroom. This was a really fun way to um, use a frame that I already had and just upcycle it for our new decor. Here you can see some of the other things that I've added to the bathroom as well that will be coming up in future videos. For my last project, I'm using one of the seahorse cutouts from Dollar Tree, one of the straw wreaths that I had previously painted white for a DIY, and I showed elephant chalk paint, but I'm actually going to end up using white instead. So I found this idea on Pinterest. I wanted this seahorse to look like driftwood and I had one of these wreaths and the idea is just to take it apart which takes a little bit of time um, you kind of have to unwind it and then break it into pieces that will be as flat as possible so I did that and then had a pile of pieces that looked like small pieces of driftwood So here, like I said, I decided to give the back of the seahorse a coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. I didn't want to paint over the decoration side just because there was so much glitter and um, didn't want to take the time to remove all that. So decided to use this side. I did make sure to paint the entire front and also the edges just so you wouldn't see any glitter. And here's my seahorse with the pieces of the wreath laid down, not quite glued on yet. And you'll see that there's some places that need to be filled in. And here is my driftwood seahorse hanging on my bathroom wall. I am absolutely in love with how this turned out. I think it's a genius way of using those willow wreaths for a new purpose. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video. You had asked for more nautical decor, so that is what inspired me to bring these to you today.